So, Security Breach just had a DLC drop, and as someone who doesn't really like the base game, I was really looking forward to Ruin. I was certainly caught up in the hype, and afterwards I felt like the gameplay was lacking in certain areas. Mainly the fact that it was supposed to be scary, but it wasn't. Maybe I was just desensitized to jump scares at this point in my life, but to me it was less scary and more annoying and, dare I say, boring? Like, what do you mean I have to take this rabbit mask off again? I just put it back on, and where is the threat? Do I really have to sit here and wait for Chica to mosey around that clump of trash to jump scare me? The fact that it's a free DLC is good. I can't imagine paying for Ruin. But despite my misgivings, I really like the storytelling. I think the story is the stilts this DLC is standing firm on. Anyways, in this background, I am drawing Glamrock, Bonnie, and Freddy going on a little date. <laughs> they got their face painted in each other's themes. Freddy having stars for Bonnie, and Bonnie having lightning bolts for Freddy. I really loved Bonnie's glam rock design, and I love his little cardboard cutout that's in Monty's, uh, what is it? His little attraction. I guess that's what it's called. <laughs> Bonnie has always been my favorite since the beginning. I thought he was really scary in the first FNAF game, and Toy Bonnie was unsettling. So he's he's just been a very solid design for every game since. And I was really sad when we didn't get to see a Glamrock Bonnie in Security Breach. But Rune fixed it in the most depressing way. <laughs> Rip Glamrock Bonnie, I love you. <laughs> now, I want to say this first. My biggest grievance about the Five Nights at Freddy's franchise is merging the books and games. Uh, I can kind of excuse the Silver Eyes series. I think that's what it is since I think that's just a retelling of the original story. I just please know I have not read a single FNAF book. I've listened to summaries of the Pizza Plex tales and such from other YouTubers. I've only been interested in the game's lore, so I've never thought that reading the books would give me info for the games, but I think that all changed after the GGY story in Tales from the Pizzaplex, which is clearly about Gregory that's in Security Breach. I, I can't help but feel lost about all this. I'm confused a bit because I'm not getting all the answers. But I guess that's just the reality now. And since Mimic is from the books and now is clearly in the games, I'm thinking we will see more books and games merging. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little disappointed with that. Anyways, I want to talk about Ruin. This is clearly a story about Mimic manipulating someone, in this case a young girl named Cassie to let him out of his uh, little cage, not a cage, his little concrete box. In concept, this is a really good story. I do like what they did with the storytelling. Gameplay wise, it's still very boring to me, at least. I think... That's the only saving grace, because the gameplay is very repetitive, there's no scares, at least to me, but the little bits of lore and character development, I think there's character development, makes it manageable. I like Cassie as a character, 
and the lore drops from within the menu is fantastic that is a great way of visual storytelling and it ju it just goes to show what the world is like cassie has a dad that's crazy in this franchise <laughs> and her dad has a hobby wow i know that people have their theories about cassie and her dad most recently but um like Cassie, she is a robot or a stand-in for Charlie or Cassie, two very prominent characters in this franchise. If you know, you know. <laughs> uh, I don't want to dive into that, but to me personally, she is just a girl, a new character, who is a very trusting person. And her dad, she, he's just a Fazbear technician. He's just mentioned by title of dad. There are some collectibles where it states that he has a hobby of collecting Fazbear memorabilia, but that doesn't mean anything. The characters can just be characters without being related to earlier mentioned characters. That's a sentence I, that looked better in writing. <laughs> anyway, I didn't even think about this until now, but the foreshadowing? is excellent. One of the first things Cassie does is climb up an elevator shaft when suddenly the elevator comes crashing down right next to her. It could have killed her. And it comes up again when she asks Helpy for another way to the Fazer Blast area. I think that is, that's the right area. And he mentions that she can go through an elevator shaft, but she decides against it. Only when she's running from the Mimic and following Gregory's directions to an elevator, she has to trust it or be ripped apart by a robot. <laughs> and when she's in that elevator, it falls with her in it. The one elevator in the game she uses and it fails her. It's, it's excellent and I didn't pick it up until now writing the script. I want to mention the Vanny mask. This bad boy can warp your perception of reality and connects to your brain. Therefore, it takes pits and pieces from your memories, from what it looks like in the game. And I think it, that is such strong storytelling and gives us more info about Cassie. In Roxy's salon, one of the best areas in my opinion, you can wear the mask and see cardboard cutouts of Cassie's memories. Kind of warped. But you can see why she likes Roxy. And she was sad on her birthday. And Gregory comes up and befriends her. It's kind of sad knowing what Cassie does to Roxy in the end. Because, like, okay, even when... I'm, st I'm still on script, but it's not. Anyways, um, when we see all the animatronics, they're all red and warped and disgusting and ruined. Uh -huh. But to Cassie, when she looks at Roxy, Roxy is in her best condition. She's complete and beautiful and green, which... Green has ties to another character in the series, but also green can be shown as good. And that's how Cassie sees Roxy. I know people have theories on that, but it's not that deep, at least to me. And it shows how much Cassie likes Roxy, because she will see her in her best form. To me, Cassie has some complex characteristics to her. She has a dad who is or was a technician at the Pizzaplex. She had a birthday that nobody showed up to, which devastated her, and I'm guessing later she meets Gregory and they become friends. 
But between all that, I see somebody who's very lonely, being like 11 or 12. In that age bracket, friends are very important. Making friends is very important. And she's lacking friends. It's pretty lonely not having anybody to rely on except for family, which isn't bad, but friends, friendships are important. I can see how she trusts Gregory to follow his pleas into that ruined pizza plex because this is her seemingly only friend, and how she trusts him into an elevator that he drops, that he, um, I think, I don't want to say dismantled, but he, he does something to the elevator and makes it drop. She's very gullible, but I can't imagine being 12 and not trusting people you thought were friends. I know another hot debate about security breach and ruin is the real ending to security breach that goes into ruin. And I kind of want to toss my two cents out before I go hide in my little bunker to escape the angry FNAF fans. But I believe Princess Quest is the canon ending to Security Breach. Not only are all the eh, not only are all the arcade cabinets toppled over, in the final one in Vanny's hideout, it has a virtual sword plug plunged into it as if a beast has been slain. I wanted to talk about Freddy, but he has a whole new can of worms opened up with him with the prototype thing on his foot and the present in his chest. It's very confusing, so I'm gonna skip over that, but because he's missing his head, it seems like proof that this the princess quest ending is canon. But I also want to talk about the Afton ending, which as an ending, I don't think it happened, but I do think the events happened, which I will get into that now, kind of. Um, we know that the blob is real, as seen in that like 0.5 second frame in the Ruin DLC. and. I have my own theory about the timeline between the ending of Security Breach and Ruin. And to start that, I'm going to assume Burn Trap and Mimic are the same thing. <laughs> like, it's been, what, it looks like it's been years or months between Security Breach and Ruin. So maybe Mimic has shared his little rabbit pee paw willy thing to try to mimic Gregory as seen in Ruin. And the fact that the blob doesn't have no pee paw willy within his coils, it makes me assume that the blob did not assimilate him as I've seen other people say. After the events of Princess Quest, I think Vanny and Gregory formed a sort of found family. It's very clearly implied that Gregory doesn't have a family and we don't know anything about Vanessa. So maybe they kind of form a family. Anyways, um... In this timeline that I'm thinking of, this theory, she starts to remember what she was supposed to do under Glitch Trap's influence. She was supposed to unearth and give power to Burn Trap, and she expresses this concern to Gregory, and they are like, okay, let's head back to the Pizza Plex, only to find a section of the Plex in ruin right around where the raceway is and where the hole to burn trap is. 
They sneak in as Vanny is still considered a security guard and has access. And when they get close to this Roxy Raceway sinkhole, the blob emerges that it dug itself out of. This causes more uh, things in the Pizza Plex collapse. We know by the wrecking ball that employees come to ruin it, dismantle. God, my brain is not working. They come to destroy more of the Pizza Plex, maybe to get rid of that. Anyways, um, I lost my place in the script. Yeah, so the blob comes out of the sinkhole, causes more ruckus. And they think, oh god, the thing probably got out too. So they go down, and this is where I'm not sure what happens. Because I don't know how to tell the story except for that it seems that they managed to lure the mimic down far below the burn trap hallway area and down below an area that looks very reminiscent of sister location like there's a scuba room and everything down there but they they lure this thing down there and pour concrete behind a metal door and when that's clearly not enough to keep it there Gregory and Vanessa create the MXES security system to keep the mimic subdued. I know it's been highly debated whether Gregory is this tech aficionado. I hope I would use that word right. That he's like a tech guru and a hacker of sorts, so maybe he helped create this security system that keeps the mimic subdued. And I think during this whole keep the thing locked away, they talk about people that they care about, people they want to keep safe, and whether they're willing to risk losing these people if the mimic gets out. And I think that's where Gregory mentions Cassie. And so that's where the mimic learns Cassie's name. Clearly, it had to hear Gregory's voice throughout security breach and such to use his voice as a lure, lure for Cassie. So, while it's learning Gregory's voice and vocal patterns and stuff to find a new way to get out, they create Vanessa and Gregory create the MXES security system, which I think keeps the mimic subdued, but it's not a permanent prison. Because if somebody does get in and turns off all the nodes, it will escape. And that's exactly what happens in Ruin. I, I think that was all over the place there at the end. I'm, I'm not a theorist. This is just where my thought process went when I watched through Ruin, multiple playthroughs of Ruin, and everybody's d debating whether Afton ending is true or Princess Quest ending is true. Why can't it be both? Like, why can't, cr why can't Princess Quest happen, but also the events of the Burn Trap ending happen? Like, that makes sense. Yeah, of course Gregory doesn't go down and throw hands with the robot. But also, it makes sense why the blob is out. Why the blob is there. And why Afton, Burntrap, Peepaw Willy, if you will, exists. And why the Mimic is there, because I'm kind of on the fence on whether the Mimic and Burn Trap are the same thing, but it makes sense in this timeline theory that I have. Anyways, I've also seen people say Gregory would never 
drop that elevator and kill his friend. It's so out of character. And that the mimic does it. L listen, it, I don't give two shits if it's Gregory or the mimic. In my mind, it doesn't change anything. However, if I'm taking these contexts from the, the GGY story, at least from what people say, Gregory in that story is only looking out for himself. Yeah, he's got friends, but he's not, he's not like friends. Like he's not going to give himself up to save his friends. He will get rid of his friends for himself. And that seems like a very Gregory thing to do in game here. He's looking out for himself, and he's not afraid to give up a friend to do that. And like, rule number one in storytelling is that you do not use names. If Greg in GGY has a Freddy best friend and is a menace to his friends, and Gregory in Security Breach has a Freddy best friend and is a best menace to his only friend in the DLC, I mean that, that they're practically the same person. And I love the gremlin child. Let him cause more chaos. <laughs> After all this, I think- I still think Ruin's storytelling is very good. I think it's what is keeping the DLC afloat. I'm very disappointed in the gameplay. It's not scary. It's very repetitive. I kind of want to see more scary happen. If they create more DLC for Security Breach, I hope this good reception for Ruin, it seems very good to me, but I hope they take this good reception for Ruin and improve on that. I've been a fan of FNAF since the beginning in 2014, and I've been watching people theorize for years, and it's been fun. I like seeing how people try to make sense of this wacky, crazy story that Scott has made. And my theory here, I'm not open for debates. I think I know how this fandom gets. And to me, this is a silly theory. I'm sure MatPat or Rytost or other theorists out there will come up with better theories than this one. I'm just an artist who had one thought hit the corner, like that one DVD loading screen or something, and I wanted to draw characters of one of my favorite franchises. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it's not Warriors, and honestly I am stepping away from Warriors, kind of. I just, I'm, I'm kind of tired of drawing cats all the time. I have other interests, like FNAF and Minecraft, and Stardew Valley. I love video games, but I don't know, I felt kind of stuck in the warrior fandom for a long time, but I want to reach out more. I have other things I want to draw, and I hope you guys will stick around for those too. Thank you for watching 